drawing today the fabulous Angela Crockett for the Writers Rock author group. Thank you so much for joining me, Angela. Thanks for having me. I've been really excited to interview you because I actually went on your website and I, I was reading the sample chapters and everything that you have on there. And oh, really? it, sounds, it sounds so intriguing. Oh, thank you. Now, um, before, before you tell me, I'm going to see if I can quickly, joys of technology, I'm going to quickly see if I can share the stream with the Writers Rock group straight away, and that way hopefully everybody there can join me. Okay. So, bear, with, bear with me one second. Sure. I am so useless with technology. Let's see if it's showing, and then I can, uh, there we go, I've got it, I've got it, I've got it. Okay, All right, bear with me. I'm gonna share this right now so everybody can join us. Share to group. Share. Job done. There we go. Wonderful. <laughs> I can't believe I did that so easily. I'm, I'm actually quite impressed with myself. So, Me too. <laughs> so you have description. Now that's not I'm actually with. So can you explain to me what speculative fiction is? Um, I didn't hear the question. I'm sorry. Can you repeat it? Can you tell us what speculative fiction is all about? Okay. Um, speculative fiction, it's, it's just kind of an umbrella term for all different types of fantasy. Um, like uh, the... The book that you've probably that's on my website that's uh, kind of more of, of a mythic fantasy, but you know I also write dystopian fantasy and more kind of lighthearted fantasy, and there's also epic fantasy, and uh, speculative fiction is kind of more of an adult term I think for fantasy. It sounds a little bit cooler. Right. Okay. Uh, does that make sense? Uh huh. Uh huh. So a lot of a lot of the short stories that I have on my website are they're they're speculative fiction because they don't really fit in that that typical fantasy box. You know, a lot of times when people think about fantasy, they think about dragons and magic and wizards and speculative fiction really tries to push the envelope beyond that. Oh. So, so is, are you finding that it's crossing genre line? That it's what? Crossing genre lines. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Maybe. Um, um, maybe, yeah, maybe that's a that's a good way of putting it. Um, I, I, I really like that term um, when I was researching. What do I call myself? I'm not, I mean, I'm a young adult writer, fantasy writer, definitely, but I don't want to be boxed into that term uh, because yes. I want to write yes. all kinds of stuff. Um, young adult fantasy is probably um, kind of kind of where my heart is, you know. Um, but when I was reading about speculative fiction, I I I really connected with that that umbrella of enclosing a lot of different things. So I think that's that's why I use it, and that's why I like it. Um, that term. Because you've been writing since you were really young. Yeah, um, I, I've been writing uh, probably my whole life. Um, even before I, I knew how to write and spell, I would, my mom said that I would get really mad because I couldn't spell words. And so I would just resort to drawing. And I couldn't wait to go to kindergarten because I wanted to learn and write to write and spell and read so badly. Um, but I didn't really start writing intentionally um, until probably 14 years ago. Wow. Um, I just don't think I just don't think I took myself seriously enough when I was younger. And there were always, uh, you know, practical concerns, bills to pay. So. Um, 
I just kind of hit a crossroads at that point and it was like, it's now or never. I got to, I got to do it. I got to write every day. Yeah. So. Yeah. And that's something that I've noticed in the Writers Rock group. Um, Wanda recently did a post asking how old people were when they started seriously writing and publishing. And the one thing that was very apparent was that so many people waited until after their careers started or they had their families and everything else before they actually got into their writing and, and as you said, took themselves more seriously. Mm -hmm. So when, yeah. you were, when you were younger and you started writing, was it still the same sort of genres that you were interested in? Um, I think I, when I was younger, um, I remember, especially when I was a kid, they, the, my stories always had dragons or castles or horses and brave women doing incredibly cool things. Um, and then as I got older, I tried to write different stuff. I tried to write more adult and sophisticated stuff. And I just always kept coming back to fantasy themes. So I think something about, I don't, I don't, the, the, the whimsy of it and, and the possibilities and the, the creative potential just keeps drawing me back in, in that, that direction. And all my favorite writers, you know, that's what they do. So yeah. you know, Tiger can't yeah. change your stripes, you know? Yeah, no, I agree. I, agree. I think it's whatever you're passionate about, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So you've actually written quite a few books already, haven't you? I, I've written a lot that's, that is never going to see the light of day, probably. Um, I started out uh, writing some high fantasy, epic fantasy novels, um, which were really good practice for the direction that I've gone. Um, yeah. And then, let's see. Um, oh, I, you know what? I even wrote them all down because I thought I was going to forget. <laughs> yeah, I've I've written um the well one of the ones that I've I've written is actually on submission right now. Um and I've already written a sequel to that that may never come out. <laughs> um, and then I've written I'm actually revising one right now that I'm hoping to have ready by July. Um and then I'm in the middle of another one. So wow. I've, I've been a problem. <laughs> no, it just, it makes me happy. And I just, I can't not do it. Yeah, yeah, we have to follow our passion, don't we? I don't know about you, but I am constantly getting new ideas for another book and another book. Yeah. I have to keep writing them down. Just the basic yeah. of the book because I'm, I'm so busy with the one I'm working on right now so and I don't want yeah. to forget <laughs> yes yes and there are there are so many times I'll open up a notebook and I'll I'll be like I forgot about this this is great stuff so yeah, yeah, yeah. anytime you get an idea you've got to write it down because I, there comes a certain point especially when when the family's around you're just got, not going to remember especially that stuff you get in the middle of the night yeah yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I'll my next day, just in case. Yeah. Because, <laughs> you know, when I haven't done it and I've, I've woken up in the middle in, in the morning, I don't, I just, it's tragic. You just don't remember. No, no, you don't. You really do have to try to while the ice is hot, don't you? <laughs> So, so what are your plans for your future then? Are you hoping to still publish or get a literary agent? How are you hoping to proceed? 
Well, I, I have a literary agent. Her name's uh, Stephanie Hansen. She um, is the agent owner at uh, Metamorphosis Literary Agency. Oh, and, wow. yeah, she's she's actually an author, too. She's she's got a book coming out soon. So um, I, I believe it's Altered Helix. I think that's the title of it. But yeah, it'll, it'll be out soon. So Stephanie Hansen, author. She's a wonderful person. Um, so she she is uh, right now uh, trying to um, I, I don't know if the right term is sell this this book that um, I, I pitched her it was at a conference uh, about a year ago. So and this is, this is the book that's on on my website right now. Um, it's called the the finding of poppy crimson Paquin. Brilliant. How exciting. So I would imagine she, she's at the process now where she's pitching it to all the publishing houses and yes. get, getting you the best best possible publishing deal. Yes. Yes, that is that is what she does. And that's um, a it's a it's a difficult process. But, um, you know, I'm grateful to be getting feedback from professionals in the in the industry. So it's only making my my writing better. And um, I'm I'm really thankful to be at this point in in my writing journey. Absolutely. Absolutely. So Ted, how do you how are you building your following as an author? Are you quite active on social media? Um, do you do events and type and engage? Um, I that is an area that I really need to work on. So here I am. Um, <laughs> I I do I have a lot of uh, writing groups that I'm a part of on Twitter, and um, there there's a thing on Twitter that it's it's like a, sh a very short story hashtag. It's a uh, hashtag VSS365, and it's just you write a, a little short story in a tweet a day. Oh, and wow. so, yeah, I try and do that every day. Um, and then I have uh, my critique partners on Twitter and um, we're constantly, you know, bouncing ideas off of each other and, and helping each other and encouraging each, each other. I, I love especially connecting with authors. I need to I need to do better about connecting with potential readers. So I'm yeah. learning from people like like you and um, like Wanda and um, there's some there's some really good marketing people on on Twitter too. But yeah, absolutely. I'm drawn more to the writing side of it. Yeah, and it's a juggle, isn't it? Because I mean, are you still working full time? Am I am I still working? The, yeah. You no, know, I, I lost my job about a year ago. And oh. so, yeah, well, it, you know, it ended up working out for the best. And so I just, you know, um, my son has autism. And so, and there was just a lot of things with my health that I needed to take care of. And so it really ended up being a good thing for us and our family. Um, yeah. And he's in high school and I don't have much time left to really teach him those things uh, he needs to know to have a chance at independence and a, a really good life. And so it was just a choice that that we made to kind of focus more on some other things. Yeah. And maybe maybe really take my my writing career and getting serious uh, about being published, really take that seriously. So Absolutely. especially as you've been picked up by a literary agent, I mean, that in itself is one of the hardest things to do is get noticed by a, a literary agent who believes in you and your story. So I agree with you. Definitely be taken seriously. Yeah. But it thank you. It is funny. It is funny how sometimes things seem to happen for a reason, even the things that happen in life can lead you in a better direction yeah isn't it and i i feel for you um because i do understand how hard it is 
being the parent of an autistic child, mm -hmm. my sister has two boys and two girls, and both of us were autistic. Oh, wow. So wow. I completely feel for you because I don't think anybody really appreciates how tough it is because you see that you see how tough it is for your children yeah especially when they look completely normal yes and you're out in the public and people assume or make assumptions about your child when they don't realize that your child is autistic. yes there's a reason it's called the invisible disability absolutely, absolutely. But I'm, I'm so books. That's absolutely. Um, have you posted or shared any of your work on Wattpad? I I haven't. I've heard of Wattpad, um, but I just haven't had a chance to to research it. And um, yeah, it, it's something that you need to consider doing um it just allows you to share samples of your work okay select, select and let readers read you. but also a way of getting your website links on there information about you and make you know a whole new audience it's 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 quite amazing, isn't it? I, I that's one of the reasons why I love doing this with you because I learn just as you guys from me, you know, between us all. <laughs> so, how did you select your age target? Um, the young adult, how did I select young adult? Yeah, what made you go for young adult? Um, I, it was probably the, the books that I read when I was a teenager. Um, really it was Robin McKinley that started all of it. Um, uh, Robin McKinley wrote, um, like the Outlaws of Sherwood and the Blue Sword and the Hero and the Crown. Um, a lot of fairy tale retellings and she she just she helped me survive high school oh and uh, she her writing just brought me so much joy and um she introduced me in a roundabout way through her blog to diana Wynn jones who's another one of my favorite writers and uh, i was i was just enthralled and entranced and it was over um, <laughs> i i love uh like um trying to think of a couple others like like katherine arden um naomi novick they some of those kind of bridge the gap between uh young adult and adult but most of most of those stories are geared toward uh, teenagers and yeah. the, it's just a, such a formative time in in their life and it's it's so full of hope and possibility and um it's it's a great time for story yeah yeah absolutely say hello because we've got another viewer hi to dale hi dale thank you for hi. joining me thank you thank you um i must admit before I actually published myself, I didn't realize how many adults actually prefer to read young adult books, purely because they don't enjoy the adult sex scenes and adult language. So, so it's, it's a massive market out there, isn't there, for young adult books, but not just for the teens. Yeah. I mean, yes, I am one of those people who I read. Yeah, it's, <laughs> I mean, it, writing, it's uh, reading. It, it's just it's supposed to bring people joy. 
And to me, yeah. that's, that's what it's about. Um, it's about enjoyment. Um, and it doesn't mean I don't enjoy all kinds of books. I mean, I just read um, All the Light You Cannot See. Oh. And that's set in World War II. And it's, it's a brilliant book. It's a beautifully written book. But the themes, um, man, they're challenging and they're heart wrenching, and um, I I cried at a few points, and I I just can't read that level of emotional, uh, emotionally moving books all the time. So sometimes I need a a little escape and just some fun. Um, so I think maybe that's why I'm I'm drawn to YA, young adult books because I'm kind of a sensitive soul. Yeah. So I, I can't read. I can't read the book Thief all the time. I mean, suddenly <laughs> crying. We've got another. We've got Starla who's joined us. Hi, Starla. Thank you so much. If anybody does have any questions during the interview, if you want to add a comment and I and then ask Angela your questions. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Now. Tell us a little bit, I mean, obviously I read your sample chapters on your website, but tell us a little bit about the character and, um, and a little bit about the story. About, um, about the book that's on my website? Okay, so like, like my elevator pitch? Oh, as long as you, you can do a short one or a big explanation, it's completely up to you. I love okay. I practiced this like 10 times today because this <laughs> is almost my worst nightmare trying to um, boil down, you know, 92,000 words into what's your book about? You yeah. Know, you would think writers would just love that question. Me, it's like, well, there's a girl and she has a problem. And so, anyway. Um, let's, exactly let's, let's see if I can actually actually talk about this. So so the book, um, the one that's on my website, and this is the one that Stephanie has right now that we're yeah. published. Um, it's called The Finding of Poppy Crimson Paquin. And it's about uh, Poppy. She's 18 years old. She's just graduated from high school. She works at Target. And... Um, she she really wants to study volcanoes. She has an interest in geology. Um, she wants to be an exchange student at the University of Reykjavik. Um, but she's having to put her dreams on hold because she has to take care of her mom who has a mysterious mental illness that no one can really explain. And so in, in the midst of this, you know, her, her friends are away at college. She's having to work, taking care of her mom. Um, terrifying elemental creatures start showing up in her life. Oh, wow. They're, they're so strange and fantastical, um, and she can't explain what's happening. So she, she really thinks she's um, possibly going through the same things her mom has been going through. And so... That's that's her her problem is she, is she really is afraid she might be um, ill herself. Um, so what what happens is uh, let me okay the sorry um, part of the the reason this is happening is. Um, before the age of 12, um, Poppy doesn't have any memory before the age of 12. They had told her that she had gotten really sick and that's why, you know, her hair is also gray because of that illness. Wow. Um, so it was, it was a pretty traumatic event in her life. And, um, so she has no memory of this and she, so, the, the answer to why these creatures are attacking her is it's buried in her memory. And she realizes that she has to figure out what happened. And so 
in anyway, she gets uh, some help from a friend, an old friend, um, who she doesn't know is an old friend. His name's Tom, and the story is actually told from two point of, of views. It's told from Poppy's point of view and, and Tom. Tom shows up about, oh, in chapter four, and he's probably about a third of the book. Um, and so um, they end up going on an adventure to this other world, which is where the elementals are from, which is where Poppy is actually from. And uh -huh. the, the stakes are Poppy really needs to figure out um, kind of her identity and these secrets that are locked in her past to be able to prevent tragedy in, in Caliph, which is where the elementals are from and the elementals, there's good ones, there's bad ones, and they're kind of the, the rulers in Caliph. So okay. I'm absolutely intrigued. It's, it's an adventure. It's, it's a romance. It's just a lot of fun. It, it sounds fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. And obviously, be, being that sort of age, you're going to have so many that can really connect with her as well. Yeah, I, I, I hope so. Um, you know, I think a lot of people, they're, they're a lot of kids that age. I hate to, I hate to say kids, I mean, teens, they're, um, they're thinking about their future. And, and, and I think even in, in the, in the climate that we live in where, where school is so expensive and opportunities seem to be shrinking. Yeah. Um, I, I bring up a lot of those themes with Poppy. And yeah. so I, I, I hope that connects with, with people in that Absolutely. phase of life. Absolutely. So, so what are you going to, obviously you've written a lot of books um are you do you have a work in progress at the moment or have you got another one that you could be pitching to your agent um i have uh another one that um i'm working on it's called the beast of kindred Vale, and Ooh. that's the one that i'm hoping is ready in july and i'm really excited about this one um because i have it's more a team of characters in this one. Right. And so I have, I have a, I'm representing a, like I have a character with autism and I have a character who has cerebral palsy and they're, they're kind of, it's actually set in uh, the, the world that I build in Poppy's novel, but right. it's in a totally different place and a totally different cast of characters. And so it's it's a new story, but I use similar world building. So Fantastic. there aren't any like contemporary elements. Um, it's it's all it's very it's very Diana Wynne Jones meets Naomi Novik. Right. So, okay. but where did your inspiration come from with the elementals and the, you know and the world that you're building around them? Yeah, I've you know I've always loved nature. Um, one of, one of my favorite things to do, and it's, it's so hard living in Missouri sometimes, um, cause I'm in the middle of the country and everything that I love is so far away, but I, I love national parks and I love hiking in the mountains and I love the Pacific Northwest and, and the ocean and these places always, they feel so real to me. Yeah. Um, they, they feel like they have a spirit. You know, they yeah. feel, feel sentient to me. And it's, it's just always been in the back of my mind that they, that was a character, you know, certain settings, um, the ocean, the mountains, that they were characters. And so I just made them characters. Um, I absolutely love it. Cause I'm like you, I absolutely love nature too. Hence why I'm out here in my garden. <laughs> Yeah, I absolutely. You know, I wanted to be outside too, and it's been raining all day. Oh no! Yeah, so I'm I'm stuck in here. But yeah, that's that's probably one of my biggest biggest inspirations too. Yeah, and I believe that you 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 and your son are quite into the old comics as well. Sorry, what? I believe you and your son like comics. 
Yes. Oh, yes. He um, all day has been carrying around a a, a Thrawn Star Wars comic. Are you familiar um, with the character Thrawn? He's I'm a villain. Not, I'm not. No. Okay. He he's a very he's a he's a mastermind character. Okay. So uh, he my son has decided he's going to do his own film of Thrawn. So he's taking a screenwriting class and he started his, his screenwriting. He's using this comic book and a Thrawn novel and some of his Star Wars canon knowledge. And he's, he's going full nerd. I love it. I absolutely love it. It's, it's brilliant. Yeah. So I've heard about that all day long. I live in a house full of nerds. <laughs> yeah. Is he your dog? It's yeah, it's well that's my daughter's dog. Um that that's Bella. She she's a white Labrador who eats everything. Oh, really? like everything. Yeah, anything plastic, rubber, or anything like that, she thinks it's no. yeah. Oh yeah. Bella. <laughs> but she's cute. They, they sure are. She's very, very cute. Now I, I don't know whether you know this. But there's actually another author called Angela Crocker. So, oh, really? Yeah. So when I was googling you and checking you out in a nice way, <laughs> I wasn't stalking you. Um, but yeah, this other lady was popping up as well. Okay. So I thought oh, I might have to mention that to Angela because I don't know whether she knows. You might want to add a, a middle edition in there or something. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'll have to talk to Stephanie about that. Might, might be a good time to change my name. <laughs> I, I, I must admit, so when you started actually really going for it and taking it seriously, um, did you tell friends and family? Were you openly telling people about it? Or was no. it a bit more positive? I was really, I'm still really private about it. It's just, it's just so near and dear to my heart. Um, and, and I'm a private person anyway. And, you know, in this business, nothing, nothing is ever guaranteed, you know? Yeah. Um, and I never wanted to set myself up for, I don't, I don't know. Um, set my, I guess, you know, there's so many options in, in this industry right now, you know, there's, there's, there's so many possibilities. And so I, I don't think that if, if you love writing and, and really pursue it and give it your all, I don't think you can fail. Um, yeah. There's just so much you can do, but I still didn't want to jinx myself. You know, it's something that I'd rather talk about after afterwards, if that yeah. makes any sense. Um, like I even had a hard time talking about, you know, when I, when I uh, signed a contract with Stephanie, it just all, it didn't seem real to me. And so it, it was even hard to tell my family about that. If that, that probably doesn't make any sense, but um, I don't, I still have to pinch myself, you know. It is tough, isn't it? Because a lot a lot of authors sorry she keeps putting her head on my shoulder look at this face <laughs> oh, they, oh, thank oh. You. lovely i hope she wasn't looking up before that Ugh. um but it is hard especially because so many authors are naturally introverted yeah. um it can be very very difficult to to actually openly celebrate yeah. You know something that's um, that's, I that's need, positive. I need one. <laughs> She's so cute. I'm make, I'm making you famous, Bella. Look, look. Oh, so sweet. Um, but yeah, it's it is very tough for us to. I know it's an English term. But blow our own trumpet. You know, yeah. toot, warn and say yes. You know, make yes. Your, that is very, very tough. Yes. What doesn't help is there are all there are some people out there who are so negative and when they chime in 
I don't think they realise how hurtful they can be. Mm -hmm. And and as we both know, when we create a book, um, whether it's a novel or a short story, you put your heart and soul into that story. And mm -hmm. when you do it, it, it really is like bearing your soul, isn't it? To be yes, done. for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you, I mean, you put a little bit of yourself in every character, yeah. every character you create. Yeah. So, so you so, met the agent at the book event. Is that something yeah. you're doing, going, going to normally? Um, you know, I, I always said I will never go to a writer's conference and pitch an agent face to face. I always said that because I didn't feel like it was my strong uh, my my strength. I didn't feel like it was playing to my strengths. Um, and then I just I hit this point and I realized I needed to do something to shake myself up because I, I am so reserved and I am so introverted that I just wanted to to challenge myself and do something that I was afraid to do. Yeah. And um, I think sometimes you just have to do that. Um, so for me, it was it was a really good way to take myself seriously. Yeah, absolutely. Um, absolutely. But I, yeah. So I, it's something that you know, especially if if you're a writer and you have trouble um, talking about your work, and you know you've been writing for years and you still haven't um, sent a query letter, I think it would be a great thing to to really kick off your career. Yeah, absolutely. You never know where it's going to lead, do you? We've just had Carla Lewis join us. Hi, Carla. Hi. Darling. Her book is fantastic, by the way. So, we do everybody check out Carla's book as well. Um, thank you for joining us. She, she desperately needs attention, doesn't she? She's slobbering all over me. Carla, if you have questions for Angela, please, please feel free to ask. It would be, uh, be absolutely awesome. Now, with the with the your book that you have on your website, I keep, the name keeps coming and going out. My brain, I'm sorry. It's, it's a mouthful. It's a it's a mouthful for I, sure. The I, the finding of Poppy Crimson Pack one. There we go. See, I am one of those people who can literally walk into a room and get there and think, why am I in here? What was yeah. I doing? <laughs> I'm not the only one. <laughs> you're not, you're not. Um, so, so what do you decide on the things that she wants to do, such as research volcanoes? Is that something that you're personally interested in yourself? You know, I, I'm interested in too many things, honestly. <laughs> I, um, geology is is one of is kind of more one of my more recent interests but i've always been fascinated by volcanoes yeah. um and you know we were talking about uh certain features of landscapes you know the oceans and mountains and almost almost feeling like they're alive you know a volcano really has that almost mythical sense of having its a personality Yes. And it honestly is, is tied to what ends up happening in the book. Mm. So um, geology and, and uh, all of all of that, uh, what that includes, is just part of one of my too many, too many interests that I'm constantly I, I mean, I'm reading articles every day about physics and space and culture and you know archaeology and I, I just you, you're a sponge like me information sponge <laughs> it's I mean Neil Gaiman calls it a uh, compost for your inspiration pile for writing uh, and, yeah he's absolutely right I don't think you could ever have too much information you know, yes. I think a curious mind is a healthy activity. Yes. I really do. Carla, um, your character also works at Target and it's her favorite store. 
<laughs> sorry, I didn't. I'm sorry, I was reading. I didn't hear you. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Carla says that your character also works at Target, and that's her favorite store. Oh, <laughs> I like Target too. I love yeah. Target. I, I always go in and spend far too much money. <laughs> what is it with Target? It's a phenomenon. I mean, yeah, isn't it just so? Um, so, with your book, are you are you hoping to do ebooks and paperbacks? What are your plans? You know, I I haven't really gone there yet. I mean, the, the, it's the dream for every writer i think to to hold a copy of their own book and and have that you know the the feeling of the paper and the print and the and the cover yeah and so i, I think really that's as, as far as i've gotten just hoping to to reach that point someday you know where i actually hold my own book in in my hands yeah um but i'm i'm pretty open minded about um where i'm going from here yeah so yeah. it's fantastic now are you any, are you part of any writing group like physical part writers groups in your area um no i you know i've i've tried to be a part of a few groups locally and they were um kind of more university based and very literary fiction um yeah. so not quite as friendly to genre writers <laughs> And you know that's fine. Everybody's got their thing. So um, I, most of my like my um, favorite critique partner lives in Montana. Yeah. Uh, Jess Jess Hardy. She has two books coming out this year. So Fantastic. Jess it's, K Hardy. It's amazing, isn't it? That the the beautiful thing about the internet and the online community is that we can have you know beta readers mm -hmm. people who can critique our work author support we can get all of that online all over the world it, it really yes. has it really has open doors hasn't it for for authors yes and i'm so thankful for it because i think every writer needs needs that because we can't we get too close to our work and we can't really see it you yeah. know we need we need uh people to show us well it's kind of lacking here and and you know all of us are going to have our strengths and weaknesses when it comes to the type of of writing that we do like i love description and i could you yeah. know i could drive stuff all day but it, when, when it comes to relational tension i've i've really that's my weakness you know <laughs> I and I I needed someone to help me see that. Yeah. And I, we're so much better writers in community. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I mean, having that support is just invaluable. Now, Carla, so she says, um, "Hang on, where we go?" Carla says, "Angela, how is Poppy doing?" Poppy's doing okay. Poppy, Poppy's still waiting for someone to love her. I mean, from the publishing world. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to say too much because I don't want to spoil the book. No, I, I know, I know. It's, it's 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 a tricky one, isn't it? I always yeah. kind of have to stop myself from from saying anything more. Uh, we've got some. Oh, Elizabeth is joining. Is Elizabeth Miller? Hi, Elizabeth. Hi. Is, Elizabeth is one of one of my readers and I, I really hope she does get a chance to check out your sample chapters on your website. Oh, I'm so interested. So sweet of you. You're going to have to keep us posted and let us know, you know, when it's going to come out and when the teasers are going to come out and thank you. It's so exciting. It's so exciting. So I know it's a difficult question, but what are you hoping um what are you hoping for your writing career are you wanting to do it full-on as a long-term full-on job um well i'm gonna i'm gonna write the rest of my life you know whether or not i get anything published um 
which, you know, like, like I said earlier, without, with all the possibilities out there, I mean, I'm going to, whether it's, whether it's self-publishing, wh whatever, I'm going to eventually um, have a book um, out there, but I'm never going to quit writing because I'm a mess when I quit writing and I'm not happy. So I'm just planning on writing the rest of my life. And um, uh, right now, I think, you know, all I can focus on is uh, trying to get Will, Will's my son, trying to get him through high school and trying to get him through college. I think, I think those are my big goals right now. Um, yeah. And then maybe when all that's done, I can kind of reassess my life, but I know I'm always going to write. Yeah. So, um, well, you, you've already, I mean, even though you, you know, you're still writing and everything out, you're already steps ahead of a lot of us. Um, and I think it's fantastic that you took yourself out of your comfort zone and went to that writer's conference and pitched your book. Um, I went through the whole process of querying ag agents um, for book one and book two, and I got absolutely nowhere. Um, so that was why I made the decision, I'm, I'm just going to self-publish and, mm -hmm. and do it. Um, mm -hmm. So for you to have already a literary agent is absolutely fantastic. And that obviously, that obviously speaks volumes about you as a writer and your fantastic book. So oh, I'm, you. I am so super excited for you. Would, would you come back once, once obviously things start getting into motion and you both, you know, your book is going to be published and everything else. Uh -huh. Yeah, I would be happy would to. Come back when, I've, and, had, I've had such a fun time talking with you and seeing Bella. It, it, I, I know, I can't, I feel all slobbery now, can you? Give my face, and at one point when you turned away, she literally had her face like right there saying hello to Sorry. everybody. <laughs> oh my gosh! Now I am going to share your your website link and everything underneath the underneath the comments. Um, but quick, just before we do go, does anybody else have any further questions for Angela while I'm talking to her one on one? um oh carla says i'm really sad about that beth oh i should have signed your book oh bless her <laughs> i do you know it's it's funny because um i think my story had quite a weird original concept and it was quite hard to grasp and i honestly think i sucked at doing my query letters uh-huh well, I read your your blurb today, and it oh, was you, fantastic. It oh, was I, I've got so more, good. I've got more confident. But like you, I'm sure, with each story that you write, you do get more confidence. And mm -hmm. I have learned so much, and I'm thrilled to say that Carla is is such a good friend. We really connected, even even though we you know we we haven't got like a working relationship. We've become very close friends, and I support her one hundred percent because she rocks. Um, mm -hmm. And I've learned so much from her, um, mm -hmm. and lots of other people as well. And and as you said earlier, you, knowledge is everything, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I don't think you can stop learning when it comes to writing and publishing. Sure. It's it's a crazy journey crazy journey but thank you so much for talking with me today darling. thank you thank you this has been a delight i so appreciate the opportunity and I, i'm glad to have gotten to know you and i can't wait to to read your work oh thank you darling that means a lot and i'm so super excited i'm going to follow your journey um please keep me posted and um and obviously let us all know at writers rock group how you're progressing and everything else um we've got so much going on at the writers rock group at the moment i will be sharing your video on the writers rock website which um i will send you the link for um and um I, I'm, I'm just i'm just absolutely thrilled I, i've been so excited about today <laughs>
Thank you so much, Beth. Thank you, darling. Feel free to share your interview everywhere. And, uh, and as I said, I'll be posting it everywhere as well. And, and I can't wait to speak to you again, my darling. I hope you have you too. a fantastic rest of your week and uh, we'll catch up again soon. You, you Thanks, everyone. Mm, Bye. Nice. Bye, darling. Bye, honey. There we go. That was the fabulous Angela Crocker. I, I'm absolutely thrilled I got to chat to her today. Um, please help Angela by sharing her interview and um, and help support our Writers Rock group and our Writers Rock readers group. Um, our website is active um, and we will be selecting um, an author of the month soon. So make sure you join the Writers Rock website because you might get selected. Um, engage with our authors, chat and support and, and look out for each other. And, um, and thank you very much for joining me today. And hopefully I'll see you again soon with my next interview. See ya.